Welcome to The Scoop, ProGuitarShop.com's informative discussion on anything and everything guitar. For this first installment, I thought I'd share something with you that's dear to me. It's the first guitar I learned to play on, and it's the first guitar my dad created back in 1992. Since then, my dad Greg Martin has built a dozen guitars over 18 years, which he's branded Redtail Guitars. So this is Brownie, named for obvious reasons. It was back in about 1991, I was plunking around in my Ibanez Destroyer, and my dad took a look at it and said, you know, I could build one of these, which was easy for him to say since he's a cabinet maker by trade. So after checking out every book he could find on guitar construction, uh, he got to work. For the body wood, he chose a piece of black walnut burl, which is something he'd had since 1975. Uh, when he bought it, it was actually 70 years old, so that makes Brownie over 100 years old. It's something he hung on to for so many years, he thought maybe he'd make a coffee table out of it since it had such a nice grain to it. So it's really a privilege that he chose to use it for my first guitar. So right about that time, we were both learning a lot about guitars, myself with playing and him with building. And that makes Brownie a real guinea pig as far as hardware and construction goes. It's had a lot of pickups swapped out, a lot of uh, you know, hardware swapped out as well. Now the neck is actually the second neck on here, and in a, it's lucky that it's a bolt-on neck since uh, we improved upon the first one which is made out of teak. This one's made out of mahogany and it has an accent strip of walnut and maple. On the back of the headstock you can see this fat head on here which was something that was sort of big in the early 90s. Basically just a chunk of brass that's screwed on with the tuners and it's supposed to help increase sustain and tone. And the only other one I've seen is on Tom Morello's main guitar. And uh, you know, I'm not really sure the effectiveness of it, but we left it on there anyway. Something else I've learned from this guitar over the years is nut construction. You know, it started out as a Corian nut, then we tried graphite and bone, uh, but we settled upon the brass nut on this one. Uh, I liked it because it's height adjustable, so it's easy to uh, swap out your string gauges. And probably the biggest lesson I've learned with Brownie is pickup selection. We've also swapped these pickups out quite a bit and gone through some different configurations with, with a out of phase and quill cut. Right now we've just gone with the DiMarzio Super Distortion, which has a ceramic magnet, which I like for pickless playing, gives you a little bit more attack. And this is also a DiMarzio Air Bucker in the neck, which is a Alneco 5 magnet, which has more of that classic PAF tone. So it's kind of a nice mix of vintage and modern. I've also learned a lot from Greg's use of alternate tone woods. Uh, you know, this one, black walnut, it's kind of similar to mahogany. It's a real dense body, it has a, a lot of sustain. Here's a good example of the neck pickup. <laughs> And you know, besides having this unique relationship with my father where he enjoys building them and I enjoy playing them, uh, you know, I'm also grateful for the experience that I've learned just from this one guitar. Uh, you know, finding out which pickups work, which pickups don't, and also, you know, just uh, little things like neck profile, scale length. You know, for me, I've always uh, liked the shorter scale length. It definitely helps with the pickless playing. Um, but, you know, recently, playing all these Fender guitars and their longer scale length, I've grown to appreciate those just as well. And I do get a lot of questions about the whole shaky neck vibrato technique, and you know, I, I think I probably picked it up from seeing Pete Townsend do it on the Woodstock film, but really I think it stemmed from this, uh, the only bolt-on neck that's been on a red tail guitar, and I think there's a reason for that. It's just a little bit too wiggly, and uh, kind of developed that habit, but uh, it actually turned into my own technique.
Well, that's the Scoop on Brownie, a guitar that's definitely helped me find my signature sound. Personally, it's something I think every guitarist should find out. Well, join me on the next Scoop, where the topic is anything and everything guitar. Thanks for watching.